I sort of stopped and one of the other participants gave a, a brief explanation. And as the discussion went on, I kept thinking like, what a good question that is. That's something that many of us have encountered that term and we're familiar with it in a particular way and it pops up in a reading and we're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, but there's so much more depth there that can be encountered. So with this talk tonight, I want to look at this question of what is a Dharma wheel, but to allow that, allow it to stay a question. So there might be definitions, but we don't need to hold on to a particular definition as the right one. Does that make sense? So in one sense, we can think of a Dharma wheel. Um, it's often symbolized by that um, eight spoked wheel that you often see as um, the emblem for Buddhism. Um, you know, just around, it looks almost like a ship steering wheel almost. Um, but it's got eight spokes usually representing the noble eightfold path. So that's one way to think of a Dharma wheel. Uh, the Shambhala Dictionary of Buddhism and Zen defines Dharma wheel or Dharma chakra as wheel of the teaching. In Buddhism, a symbol of the teaching expounded by the Buddha, exemplifying the Four Noble Truths or the Eightfold Path, the Middle Way. The Dharma chakra is usually depicted with eight spokes representing the Eightfold Path. According to tradition, the wheel of the Dharma was set in motion three times. In Sarnath, where the Buddha pronounced his first discourse after attaining complete enlightenment. Two, through the origination of the Mahayana, that's one of the major schools of Buddhism. And three, through the arising of the Vajrayana, yet another major school of Buddhism. Another definition um, that I've heard through my studies with the Tibetan college I attend, um, it said that the wheel of the Dharma was put in motion three times, once for the teaching of um, the Eightfold Path and the Four Noble Truths, once again with the teaching of um, the Wisdom Sutras, and then a third time with the teachings of um, the Yogacara teachings. So a little more different, different way of looking at mind and reality. So as you can see, there's different ways of looking at how um, these turnings of the wheel have been defined and represented. To turn the wheel of the Dharma in Buddhist literature often denotes some sort of significant change. And in the chapter that we read from Thich Nhat Hanh, he wrote three points characterize the sutra in reference to this Dharma wheel, the teaching of the middle way, the teaching of the four noble truths, and engagement in the world. So once again, you can have these, this set of three that is connected with the turning of the Dharma wheel. One of the things I remember when Gyokuko was training me as a Tenzo, um, I had been assisting as a cook in the temple kitchen for years. And at some point I was being moved into uh, training as Tenzo, so the chief cook in the temple. And when that happened, Gyokuko, who was one of the abbots at the time said, everything you've done before, stop, put it down. You're not allowed to do anything. You're not allowed to cook anything. I'm going to teach you how to wash dishes. So I started all over from the beginning and she taught me how to do dishes. And she taught me how to chop something, how to hold a knife. So um, little bits and pieces starting from the beginning again. And I have a very visceral memory of standing at the stove with her standing to my right. We were making a sauce. I think she was teaching me how to make a roux. 
and um, just very casually she said, and always stir, in always stir clockwise because the Dharma wheel turns clockwise. And I flagged that as like this little piece of weird Zen esoteric knowledge that I would fritter array inside somewhere. Um, but that never left me. The Dharma wheel turns clockwise. I don't know why, but I just accept it as fact. We encounter a uh, Dharma wheel often in our echo, the dedication that we recite or the precentor recites after our chanting service. May we aspire to turn the Dharma wheel unceasingly and thereby free the world of every tragedy of war, epidemic, and starvation. May we, together with all sentient beings, realize the enlightened way. So initially, when a Dharma wheel was referenced, it was usually referenced in response to or um, in regard to Buddha Shakyamuni on his enlightenment turned the wheel of the Dharma and he turned the wheel of the Dharma three times representing these three different sets of teachings. So that definition is pretty specific towards here's a remarkable person doing a remarkable thing. This is a super special thing. So fast forward going from very, very early Buddhism to the rise of the Mahayana, the development of Zen, um, which went, you know, from India to China to Japan to us, somewhere in there, this dedication gets written. And it's written in this sense of, may we aspire to turn the Dharma wheel. And is that phrase an aspiration of our own Buddhahood, of our own, may we someday do this thing? Or is it a question of, may we remember to do this thing? May we not forget that this is an important thing to do. So I want to read to you from um, a sutra called the Lalita, Vis Lalita Vistara Sutra, which is often translated as the play in full. This is not a sutra that I've read all the way through, but it's um, a Mahayana sutra that describes um, the Buddha's the Buddha's life and enlightenment. And it's a sutra that I've gone to um, to describe well, what happened upon his enlightenment and sort of the details and the stories and the mythology around that. Uh, but this time I'm coming back to it to look at this question of just what is this Dharma wheel? What is this idea of a Dharma wheel? So in this story, we've gotten all the way through the Buddha's life and his enlightenment and meeting the five ascetics that he had trained with previously. Um, so this is, this is parallel to what Thich Nhat Hanh was talking about in his chapter, that, uh, that enlightenment and then meeting the, the five trainees that he had trained with previously and, and giving his first teaching. Um, so this being a Mahayana Sutra, there's all sorts of extra stuff going on. There's celestial beings and deities and um, it's a lot more cosmic than a straight Theravadan reading of this story might be. So at that point, the Bodhisattva, the great being Maitreya, Maitreya is the Buddha of the future, Address the Blessed One. Lord, these bodhisattvas, the great beings who reside in the ten directions of the world, would like to hear from you in person in order to learn how you turn the wheel of Dharma. Therefore, Lord, please be kind enough to explain what kind of wheel is the wheel of Dharma, which has been turned by the thus gone one, the worthy one, the perfect Buddha. Huh. 
Here's Maitreya asking her question, what is a Dharma wheel? How do you turn a Dharma wheel? The Blessed One replied, Maitreya, the wheel of Dharma is profound because it cannot be grasped by the intellect. This wheel is hard to see because it is beyond duality. This wheel is hard to comprehend because it is not an object of conceptual investigation. This wheel is hard to discern because it is related to the sameness of wisdom and consciousness. This wheel is without any blemishes because it leads to the attainment of liberation, which is free from any obscurations. This wheel is subtle because it cannot be exemplified. This wheel is essential because it leads to the attainment of Vajra-like wisdom, so diamond-like wisdom. This wheel is indestructible because it pre-exists its own turning. This wheel is without mental elaboration because it is devoid of the sources of conceptual thinking. This wheel is undisturbed because of its infinite steadiness. This wheel encompasses everything because it is equal to the sky. Maitreya, this wheel of Dharma has the nature of the essence of all phenomena. It is a wheel with the power to teach. It is a wheel beyond birth, cessation, and enduring. It is a wheel without the all ground. It is a wheel of the Dharma way of non-conceptuality to its full extent. It is a wheel of emptiness, a wheel of signlessness, a wheel free of any intent. It is a wheel of the unconditioned, a wheel of solitude, a wheel without desire, a wheel of cessation, a wheel that engages with the enlightened mind of the thus gone ones. It is a wheel that is unconfused regarding the realm of phenomena, a wheel that is undisturbed concerning authentic limit. It is a wheel without attachment and obscuration. It is a wheel free of the extreme of the two extreme views in the understanding of interdependence. It is a wheel without disturbance within the realm of phenomena beyond center and edge. It is a wheel of the effortless and ceaseless activity of the thus gone one. It is a wheel beyond activity and non-activity. It is a wheel utterly ungraspable. It is a wheel beyond effort and effortlessness, an inexpressible wheel. It is a wheel that is like the nature of phenomena. It is a wheel entering the sameness of all phenomena within a single sphere. It is a wheel that never reverses and continuously bestows guidance and blessings on sentient beings that are deprived of freedom. It is a wheel of entering the way of the ultimate truth, which assumes non-duality. It is a wheel that genuinely subsumes the realm of phenomena. This wheel is immeasurable because it transcends all limits. This wheel cannot be enumerated because it is beyond something that can be counted. This wheel is inconceivable because it is beyond the realm of conceptual mind. This wheel is unequaled because it is beyond equality. This wheel is inexpressible because it is beyond all paths of audible words. It is limitless. It is without example because it is beyond exemplification. It is like the sky, it does not cease, yet neither is it permanent. Accepting interdependence, it does not disturb its peace. It is infinitely peaceful. It is reality itself. Its nature is none other than that, not like that, or neither. It speaks the languages of all beings. It suppresses all demonic forces and defeats the non-Buddhists. It is an escape from cyclic existence. It is the entering into the realm of the Buddhas. It is understood by noble beings and realized by solitary Buddhas. The Bodhisattvas embrace it. It is praised by all the Buddhas. It is indivisible from all the thus gone ones. So that is what the sutra has to say about what a Dharma wheel is and how one turns a Dharma wheel. 
And in a way, you can look at that um, like many of the things that are talked about in Zen practice, where it, it is and don't attach to that definition of what you think it is, because it's more than that. It's beyond that. Sometimes when we're reading sutras, um, we talk about revolving the sutra and um, is turning a dharma wheel the same or is it different than revolving a sutra of bringing that sutra to life, embodying it. So how do we turn the dharma wheel and how are we turned by a dharma wheel? How does the dharma wheel turn us? What is a significant change we initiate into our lives? If we go back to that earlier definition, is it coming to practice? Is it taking certain vows? Dogen used to say, or he used to quote, I'm not sure if this was his saying or the saying of another, that we do not need to add Zen to our lives. We simply need to make our lives Zen. There's nothing to add, literally no thing. And yet a shift in perspective, right view, means everything. So I'll ask again one more time, how do you turn the wheel of the Dharma? How does the Dharma wheel turn you? And with that, I'll ask Shintai to unmute us and we can have a little uh, discussion about this Dharma wheel. Any thoughts or questions or comments? I know less than when we started. <laughs> <laughs> well, take what is useful and don't worry about the rest. Good. And it may be at a later time some of that will become more useful and you might switch out your understanding. Um. So I would just like to make a, a suggestion that in fact, the clock could be considered as going Dharma wise instead of the Dharma wise. <laughs> I, like that. <laughs> That's yeah. good. I like that. Nice. I, I wouldn't know how to turn the Dharma wheel, but I, I, I have a feeling about the Dharma wheel turning me sometimes. And, and that's like in times of, um, per, of like periods of grace of, of total alignment or not total alignment, but at least better than usual alignment with um, the precepts and the rest of the universe and were those periods where things fall into place easily and doors open and everything is effortless. It, it could maybe kind of fit the description of the Dharma wheel turning mm -hmm. me. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I have a sense my my working my working definition for myself personally right now is um, like turning the wheel of the Dharma is engaging wholeheartedly in life, accepting this moment totally and um, contributing my life energy to the unfolding of this moment trying to do so in a way that is skillful and non-harming. And that's somewhat wrapped up in my um, vows of practice and my intention to live my life in a particular way. Um, but there's also that sense that it's not, um, it's not small I, it's not the small self, the ego self that turns the wheel of the Dharma. It's when I get out of the way 
and allow the turning to happen, that that is there. And that's just, you know, my sense of my definition right now. I'm sure other people can have other definitions or uh, argue with that or poke at my logic or lack of logic. I'm reminded again of a Christian term and that is um, Jesus saying that um, if a man is going to save himself or a woman, um, they must be born again. Mm. And the idea is a complete change in perspective. Um, mm. the, the Greek word is metanoia, mm -hmm. which um, Jung referred to as this idea of um, what's the term? I, I'm trying to think. It's not indemnification. What is the union term for when you... Individuation. Individuation. Thank you. Mm. Which is a complete change of perspective um, it's a 180. It's mm -hmm. just uh, turning around and going in a different direction. Hmm. I like that. Interesting. I think there's, I think so many different spiritual traditions will have similarities amongst them. And then also distinguishing differences that are unique to each particular path. Um, I like hearing how, like the parallels between Buddhism and other traditions, because I get to learn about other traditions in a particular way. So, somehow, to me, turning turning the Dharma wheel seems in seems it to, um, to to be related to teaching. Mm -hmm. That's usually, that's usually how, what it's connected with, at least in that sense of uh, the Buddha turning the Dharma wheel. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I'll point us back to our echo. May we aspire to turn the Dharma wheel unceasingly. What is that unceasingly? And how is it connected to that aspiration? An aspiration implies a future event, but unceasingly. Yeah. It sounds a little exhausting. Yeah, it sounds like that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't think it is. I think like uh, the Dharma with a capital D, mm -hmm. not as in just a Dharma as being some kind of law. Yeah. Uh, but the Dharma we do try and turn it unceasingly because if you try to follow the middle path and try to follow the eightfold path or the precepts, then it's an everyday practice and it's a continual practice. Um, I like, I think somewhere it says, the Buddha says, I'm going to go to, I'm going to Kashi and I'm going to bang the drum and turn the wheel of Dharma. Mm -hmm. And, and on the Indian flag, there's the, the, the top of the Ashokan pillar with the yeah. elephant, the ox, uh, the lion, and the horse. And above that's the Wheel of Dharma. Mm -hmm. And that's um, in the museum at Sarnath. And it's very beautiful mm -hmm. to see. Mm -hmm. But um, the, it's a kind of representation of that wheel. But it's also too, like, on the, on the Buddha's feet. Yeah. A lot of the early art had representations of the wheel of dharma you know like you keep on walking you keep on you know you t you know i love that expression you know can you walk and chew at the same time mm -hmm. it's it's a little bit like that with the dharma that's that's my view it's not it doesn't have to be that way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah the metaphor of a wheel has many um many applications and a wheel has meant many things to different people over the centuries and um, 
So if the wheel keeps turning, mm -hmm. then eventually it comes back to the same place it started. And if we are on the wheel or turning, then we are coming back again and again, but perhaps at a higher place. I mean, hopefully, at a, I think of it more like a spiral. But, mm. the, but if a wheel's turning, it always ends up back where it started. The wheel does, but does the cart. Right. Nope. <laughs> but it's not a Dharma cart, it's a Dharma wheel. What is the Dharma wheel on? Is it on a cart? Is it, what is it powering? <laughs> is it powering <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of ways to mm -hmm. to play with this idea and to play with this term. And I think like for me the question is more important than the answer. Like holding that question of of what is a dharma wheel and you know what do I need it to be or who is the self that is asking or what is the context in which this question is arising? It might be, I might end up with a different answer on different days. How I answer that question of what is a Dharma wheel if I'm writing a paper for my um, Tibetan philosophy teacher, I might have a different answer than if I'm um, answering a general question that came into staff email or if I'm speaking to someone in Sanzen about a verse from a sutra. Um, we can we can go from the very concrete and graphic depiction in terms of, of, of a symbol of a of one of those eight spoked wheels um, all the way to this vast <laughs> cosmic um, description that was in the sutra of this wheel that is beyond conception beyond um, idea and thought and language. What is that that is beyond what we can name and articulate? It gives us that invitation to lean in and investigate. What is that? What is that? What is this? One of the it, earliest it, symbols for wholeness is the Ororobus, mm -hmm. which is a snake swallowing its tail. Mm -hmm. The implication being that the knowledge necessary to behold is within us, mm -hmm. and that that's what the snake swallowing symbolizes is the finding of wholeness or being whole through the investigation of the self. Mm -hmm. And I can see that in the Buddha's teachings of the middle way, that mm -hmm. middle way between eternalism and nihilism, between um, self-mortification and self-indulgence. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Sometimes when I think of Dharma wheels, I think of uh, the Tibetan prayer wheels, which mm -hmm. are stationary, mm -hmm. but pivot. Mm -hmm. And the, the prayers spiral out as the wheel turns. Clockwise, right? Sure. Clockwise. No, it really, I think if you turn them the wrong way, it sucks all the prayers back out of the universe. <laughs> it's true. What if you're on Peter's true. side of the of the globe? Does good it go question. The That's way? a good, good question. Uh, no, 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 that doesn't work because we're ahead of <laughs> Well, I like that it I like that it defeats demons and also non Buddhists. Yeah, I was like, oh, wow. Mm. <laughs> it's good. No, I like it. It's good. Anything that defeats demons yeah. is, is good. It's sort mm -hmm. of an interesting thing about the art of it too. Like, I mean, I mean, yes, there's the sutras, but also there's the visual representations. Mm -hmm. And what I find really fascinating is like, for instance, at San Chi, mm -hmm. whenever that you see an image of the Buddha that's, or the enlightened Buddha, it's always a, an image of a Bodhi tree. Mm -hmm. And you never see images of actual um, figurative images 
like mm -hmm. they're all very coded but they're all very beautiful and mm -hmm. like some of the images there are just the most beautiful swirling almost psychedelic images oh. and it's quite um an interesting thing but the other thing which is like i guess from my i mean i i read theravir material i read Mahana material mm -hmm. Vajrayana material consciousness only material mm -hmm. and i get in trouble because i say ah oh, you know like um you know like those chan monks they're dissembling because they're mm -hmm. saying that that's the little that's the little vehicle and i go well but that's not it's it's all um it's um there's a sort of relative till it there's sort of a relativism mm -hmm. but also too there's a lot of truth in each of the various traditions and I think it's good to know them all, you know. I'm, from my perspective, I, I'm really by how we, how the Mahayana, Yogacara and Vajrayana arose from the various schisms. Mm -hmm. And what is the philosophical context of it? So, but that's there's, sort of another story. There's so much history there. Yeah. There's so much history there. If you don't mind, I'm going to unplug my computer and take you all over to a piece of art that was donated to the temple. That's a little Dharma wheel or a big Dharma wheel. Um, so I apologize for the motion. Let's see if I can stand up. So if you Usually where I sit in the library, this is behind me in the view. Um, let's see if I can get it. There it is. Uh, wow. So that is... Okay. Um, hmm. wow. That's the awesome. sort of wood that's been lacquered. Um, hmm. Yeah, just a stylized, stylized eight-spoked wheel. Um, I was... I was looking through the books in the library, trying to see if I could find something with a thermal wheel on the cover, but nothing came to mind really quickly. Hmm. This one there. If I talk, you might see it. Can you see there on the book? There it is. Mm, a little bit. It, it kind it of just flashes in out. out. No, it, uh, it's too hard with the um, background. Your background, it disappears. Uh, yeah. I can fix that. Sometimes <laughs> you disappear and it cracks me up. Yeah. yeah. Kind of funny. <laughs> I like disappearing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be theater sometimes. <laughs> You're like the Cheshire cat when you yeah. disappear. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's fun. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> Is that working? Yep. Yeah. 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 Now, now yeah. All right. Background. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see it. Oh, yeah. yeah. It looks like a, you know, it reminds me of like a compass or a, mm -hmm. a yeah. sailor yeah. compass or something, which is and, kind of an interesting metaphor. And the one on that side's got like all the, it's really very stylized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. It's, it's well, said in the beautiful. sutra that it, it never reverses, mm -hmm. which I, I think that's interesting. Yeah. You have to turn it clockwise. I mean, it has to go clockwise. Well, that seems pretty dual to me. Dual? Yeah. Because I have a story. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was, in, I was in Nepal nine years ago, and I was at a Tibetan monastery, and I walked by a stupa, one of those tall, and I walked counterclockwise. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was doing and this nun came out who didn't speak English and but like went to town on me and uh non-verbally and made me like walk clockwise yeah. mm -hmm. and that was how I learned how to walk clockwise around mm. anything related to the Dharma mm -hmm. and I remember at the time feeling like I don't know, moved that she cared about my practice. You know, I'm some like dumb American tourist walking mm -hmm. through the monastery and she stopped me anyway. Mm. Such a kindness. It's the same with pagodas in China. Mm -hmm. That you walk around it 
in the same way. Because well, the, the pagoda is a, the pagoda is effectively a stupor. Mm -hmm. Now we walk clockwise it's when we do our kin hin in the yeah. in the sangha mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as well. Interesting. Mm -hmm. The Native American way is going clockwise. There's mm -hmm. other ways that go clockwise. Mom had an yeah. observation while we were muted. <laughs> Well, I was just wondering, because you know, when water goes down the drain, it always goes clockwise. Not here. No, not in the, yeah, not in Australia. <laughs> are, are, is the earth in, always traveling clockwise too? Or do we go clockwise around the sun? Is it all? I never thought about that. Mm, I don't know. Well, is the moon around the earth? Yeah. <laughs> Dharma wise. So I don't think the moon, it's not, it's not like on a flat plane, right? <laughs> you wouldn't, you couldn't tell if it went clockwise or not because it's in three dimensions. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take your word. I don't know. It's it's eight seventeen and didn't I say in oh God, is it? <laughs> I was trying to make the earth and the moon and trying to think <laughs> this is getting too deep for my I thought, I thought saying, like wrap it up. <laughs> I'm like, here's the earth and here's the moon. Is that clockwise or not clockwise? Well, I think the whole southern hemisphere question needs to be discussed. Yeah, <laughs> Let's keep coming back. Atmosphere. Keep coming back. <laughs> well, <laughs> looks like we are we are approaching wrap up time. So I'm gonna now see. I'm I'm talking because I'm trying to figure out my mute unmute um, business here. So I will um, mute you all again while Joshin says the verse. Except I gotta unmute you. So hang on. And you have to mute yourself. Oh, yes, that's the critical. The universe is, is the boundless sky, just as the lotus is not wetted by the water that surrounds it. The mind is immaculate and beyond the dust. Let us bow to the highest Lord. All Buddhas, All Buddhas throughout, space, throughout and space and time. And time. All oh. honored ones, Bodhisattvas, Mahasattvas, wisdom beyond wisdom, Maha, Prajna, Paramita. Thank you all very much. And I'm assuming that next week we'll have our next chapter in Thich Nhat Hanh. Thank you so much, Tiyoshin. Wonderful yeah, talk. You. Lots to think about. Thank you. I can't walk, make circles counterclockwise. And the question is, if she was in Australia, would she turn the other way? <laughs> I didn't hear the beginning of what you said, but. My cat always makes circles counterclockwise over and over when she comes in she turn counterclockwise but in australia she'd go the other way i think we've got a long list of questions for Peter. Uh, yes i got <laughs> it just brought up more questions, questions than we had to learn more about thank you for trying to answer my question <laughs> thank you for asking it dixie what a great, what a great <laughs> the important thing is the sun still rises in the east here oh good okay <laughs> all right <laughs> all right east is east and west is west yeah oh, that's, good. Well, that's good to know <laughs> whoa that's crazy <laughs> well, what, how do you use the Dharma wheel? That's what I wondered. 